good to see you as always. Um, are, are these pledges a little bit lacklustre, Pat? I mean, they're not saying anything um, particularly strong, are they, or particularly new? Oh, I think they'll make a real difference to people's lives. If you're someone who's uh, got a mortgage or maybe hopes to have one in the future, then knowing that uh, a Labour government will have economic stability uh, as its first priority and economic growth is really important to you. And it shows that we don't want to have a repeat of the disastrous mini-budget that happened a couple of years ago. If you're someone waiting for NHS treatment, uh, where the waiting lists are, you know, nudging 8 million, knowing that you'll get 40,000 extra appointments every week to eat into those waiting times and waiting lists, that will make a real difference to you too. If you uh, are concerned about your energy bill, knowing that we're going to set up a publicly owned energy company, GB Energy, to drive the change that we need, get bills down in the longer term and improve our energy security, that will make a difference to you too. So taken together, these six first steps that we're launching today, they really are change worth having that will make a real difference to people's lives. And they're just a down payment on change. They're not everything that we do, but we're publishing them today to give the public a sense of the priorities of Labour were we to win the general election. Look, you're in Essex today, which is a real Tory heartland, not a single Labour MP in that county. And this is part of these pledges, isn't it? Wanting to appeal to those who have voted Tory um, recently. So what, what would you say then to, to criticism that these pledges, especially on the economy, NHS and immigration, well, they're almost identical to Rishi Sunak's pledges. You're just offering voters soft Tory. Well, I'd uh, say two things. One, he's not uh, delivering. Uh, I don't think the Tories have made a priority of stable economics. In fact, they've done the opposite. Uh, they gave us reckless, irresponsible economics. I don't think they've made a priority of cutting NHS waiting times because those waiting times and lists have gone up and so on and so forth. But in the broader sense, if you're asking me why are we doing this in Essex today, it's a matter of basic arithmetic that if you're going to uh, win a general election, off the back of a, a very bad defeat a few years ago, you have to appeal to people who haven't been voting for you in recent uh, elections. There's no other path to victory. You can't just appeal to the people uh, who always voted for you. And what we're saying to those people today is this is a changed Labour Party with a good set of first steps here that will show you, the voters, uh, the priorities if you vote Labour at the next election. They won't be the only things that we'll do, but there'll be a good foundation. And if we do them, we can push on and make more progress for the country. Some of the, I mean, they, they might be perfectly valid points, but people are going to look back at this and say, well, it didn't work for Ed Miliband. We look at that, yeah, that awful Ed Stone business that went out. Oh, there we go. We can see it on our screens now. And it, it was a PR disaster. And his six pledges were, well, not exactly like these six pledges, but frankly, not far off, Pat. Well, I'm interested more in tomorrow than in yesterday. I mean, that election was uh, almost 10 years ago now. Uh, these are policies for today and tomorrow. I think they fit well with uh, the things that people are concerned about, the economy, the NHS, education, energy bills and so on. Uh, and we're going to not just launch them today, but to campaign hard on them between now and the next election. Look, I wanted to ask you about a story in The Telegraph this morning uh, that you claimed over £40,000 in expenses to rent a constituency house next door to your own home. So you had taxpayers subsidising your property portfolio. No, this was a, a change in the rules about 12 years ago where uh, they changed the rules to stop uh, MPs in any second home they were uh, subsidised for uh, from being uh, mortgaged to rent. I completely complied with the rules. In fact, I sold the property at a considerable personal loss, which I covered uh, myself, and I applied with the rules at all times. Uh, well, look, and to be fair, the, the, you know, the, 
that actually is, you know, for, for the avoidance of doubt, that's absolutely right. You did, a, a, you did stick within the rules. Um, Sir Alistair Graham, as former chairman of the Committee on Standards in Public Life, though, said that you went against the spirit of the expenses rules. Well, that's never what the authorities have said. And in fact, any changes I made were made not to get round the rules, but to comply with them. And as I say, the end result of all this, uh, because of the change in the rules and the way that uh, these things were done, uh, was to uh, sell a property and to cover their loss completely personally, financially, uh, my, by myself. So I did that in order to comply with the rules, not to get around them. It stinks, though, doesn't it, of, of hypocrisy? I mean, you're, you're a party that launched a campaign last February which attacked the Tories over lavish spending on hotels and restaurants using government credit cards. And you have, or you have had in the past at least, taxpayers subsidising your property portfolio. But this, there has always been a situation where if MPs are elected and they're a considerable way from London, then the authorities uh, subsidise some kind of second property because you're always living in two places. So this isn't personal to me. This has been part of the parliamentary system for uh, a long, long time. And everything that I've done with my own arrangements has complied with those rules. It's not a special case for me. This is, this is MPs throughout the country. Anyone who doesn't represent a London constituency will have some sort of accommodation subsidy either in London or in their constituency. Uh, and that's, that's the case for all those MPs. Um, I mean, this, to, to be fair to you, Pat, this isn't a new story. This came out quite a number of years ago, but it's the fact that it's re-emerged now. Um, it's, it's, it's like the sort of um, the bad smell that you can't get rid of, in a way. No, I look, I don't know why. Uh, that particular newspaper has chosen to print that today. You'd have to uh, ask them, as you say, this was all quite some time ago and all actually done in order to comply with the rules, not to get around them. And Pat, whilst we've got you, there are whispers in Westminster today that we are going to see another defection from the Tories to Labour because you are in, in an Essex seat today. Whispers that there may be an Essex MP that is going to defect to the Labour Party today. Is that something that you can confirm is going to happen? I don't know anything about that, but I do know, as I said uh, a few minutes ago, that when it comes to the next election, we'll be asking people who perhaps voted Conservative in the last few elections to take another look at Labour, take a look at the first steps that we are launching today, the priorities that we're going to put before the voters, and they'll see a changed Labour Party from the one uh, five or six years ago when it comes to that general election. Oh, I don't know. There's a there's a bit of a wry smile on yeah, your lips there, is. there, Pat. I don't know. Some, something might happen. We shall find out. But we appreciate your time today. Thanks very much indeed. Thank, Thank you, you very much indeed.